in this episode we introduce arguably the best second world war tank britain ever made As Britain was still developing and finishing off their developed tank models, they required a stopgap and all they had access to was a lot of M4 Shermans from the United States. However, they created a stopgap tank called the Sherman Firefly. This Firefly, equipped with a 17-pounder anti-tank gun as its main weapon, was conceived as a stopgap but ended up being extensively used by the British Army. There are a few characteristics that are different with the Sherman Firefly compared to a Sherman M4A1, for example. It is a M4A4 to start with. The hull, for example, is welded as opposed to a casted hull that you would get on the United States variant. The British also sunk in a Chrysler multi-bank engine and actually was quite fond of it. Another key feature, something that most people don't see, is that there's actually a gap in the bogey spring suspension, something that is very unique to the Sherman Firefly. The standard 75mm cannon was actually replaced by a 17-pounder gun and put on its side. Funny enough, this actually worked a little bit better for the loader as he didn't have to put the ammo all the way over his shoulders, but just move it from side to side. Also, another peculiar point is that there was no machine gun port. They actually removed that completely and covered it up with a plate so that they could stow more ammo in that spot. Speaking of the turret itself, you would notice at the back of the actual tank is a big metal box. That is because it's actually cut out to support the 17 pounder gun. It is so big that they needed to actually cut a hole at the back and then post a box over it. So let me start off with my favorite part, doing the actual comparisons of the War Thunder variant and of course the real deal. So one interesting thing to mention about the actual armor of War Thunder and of course uh, the real variant is that it is actually the same. In War Thunder, they call it rolled homogenous armor, but that actually, in fact, is welded armor as well. The cast homogenous armor is indicated on the transmission area and turret. From what I can see, this seems to be pretty accurate. If you're enjoying the content so far and would like to keep up to date with every single week, please consider subscribing. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, I got the shot off on... There we go. I mean, the AP rounds are fine, but it's... Oh, wait, look at this. The Russian just comes right past. How did it sneak past? Back of the head, execution style. That's the critical hits. So, the high velocity cannon makes a world of a difference on this Sherman. Turn to your front. Then you can drop them. Now something also just to note in terms of the suspension of this actual tank is that it seems to check out in terms of looks. It does look like it's got that gap between the two double bogey spring suspension systems 
which I think is correct. So I will tentatively say that that is correct. So let's look at the War Thunder stats. It comes in at a battle rating of 4.7. Its research cost is 26,000 research points. Its purchasing cost is 76,000 silver lions, so it's not too expensive. For the optional extras and upgrades, it's going to set you back 44,600 silver lions and 24,400 research points. So in terms of the speed, the top speed at 41 kilometers an hour on realistic battles. Pretty effective and not too slow if you ask me. It's not the quickest tank out there, but it does the job. So now we are moving on to the main armament and its details there. It is correct in terms of having the 76mm QF 17 pounder cannon. So that one checks out for me. In terms of the types of ammunition that you get, you get the shot MK6, MK4 and MK8 variants. And then you've got the high explosive shell MK1 variant as well. The most effective being the shot MK8 APC BC round that seems to have the best flight path and better penetration. So sometimes you can get a very good shot in with the firefly. Is that sometimes you get a good shot in and you're lucky, but but because you don't have an explosive filler, it makes it just a little bit more difficult for you. Those are quite easily gone down. heavy the firefly it goes and it goes and it goes and it goes So overall, what's my feel about the tank? Well, I can tell you that it's definitely a fun tank to play. It's easy to play. Actually, it's not that difficult. The thing though with this tank is that it doesn't have much gun depression. So what do you do in this sort of scenarios? Well, you're going to have to play between the hills. On the flats, well, you're going to have to stick in a pack because then likely chance that you'll get or less likely chance you'll get taken out first. It's a bit of a gamble. But otherwise, it is quite a fun tank to play. You have to play it safe and obviously play from a distance. Playing in a pack is probably going to be your best option with this tank, unless you are a tank ace and you know how to battle it out on the battlefield. Anyway, so interesting thing about the Sherman Firefly is it used to take out the Panthers and the Tigers. Speaking of those tanks, here they are. And here's an interesting video to take you through on what they were all about.